Okay, I've explained matter and energy, states of matter, change of states. Now, we are in particle nature of matter. So before I go straight into particle nature of matter, I want to quickly define these four terms. So that when I'm teaching the particle of matter, particle nature, they'll begin to make sense. Yes, they'll begin to make sense. <laughs> now, kinetic theory of matter states that matter is made up of many small particles that are in constant random motion. They are in constant motion. The uh, Brownian motion is explains the movement of particles in a fluid as they collide with one another and the wall of the container or containing vessels. Capillarity is the rise or fall of liquid or fluid in small surfaces, especially example uh, capillary tubes. Then coercion and adhesion. Coercion is the force of attraction between molecules of the same substance, while adhesion is the force of attraction between molecules of different substance. Now, for example, when you pour uh, water in a surface, there is this uh, force of attraction between them. It touches the surface or it wets the surface. Okay? These are different substances. So as I explained the particle nature of matter, these things will begin to make sense to you. Now, there are scientists believe that matter is made up of particles. And these particles are atoms, molecule and ions. Now, what is an atom? What is molecule and what is <coughs> an atom is the smallest particle of an element. Smallest particle of an element. <coughs> now, this has shown that matter contains particles. Now, smallest particle of an element that can take part in chemical reaction. Now, we've introduced a new term. What is an element? Matter can exist as element compound and mixture. Element is a substance that contains only one type of atom. It's a substance that cannot be split into simpler form by an ordinary chemical mean, chemical method. So it contains one type of atom. Why compound contains two or more atoms or two or more elements chemically combined together? So let's say elements is one atom. Compound contains two or more atoms combined but they are chemically combined together. For example, this is hydrogen and this is oxygen. When, you, when these two are combined chemically in a chemical reaction, they form H2O. And this becomes water, which is different from the property of oxygen and the property of hydrogen. That is to say, in compounds, a new substance is formed whose character is different from the each element that make up the compound. And compound cannot be easily separated. They are very hard, almost impossible to separate. M now, mixture. Mixture also contains two or more elements combined, but they are not chemically combined. They are physically combined. For example, well, sand and gari. When you mix them, you can separate them. Yes, you can separate them. Then salt and rice. 
when you pour salt inside water, you can separate them. So they are mixed, physically mixed together. In my uh, video on separation of mixture, I explained how you can mix all those things. Even in crude oil, yeah, they are mixture. In refinery, you begin to separate them and get other components. So mixtures are physically combined and they can be separated easily. Why compound cannot? Why element contains only one type of substance or only one type of atom? Compound contains more than one. So compound requires chemical reaction. Mixture doesn't. It's physical combination. So now, atom is the smallest particle of this element that can take place in chemical reaction. Now look at the difference between this atom and molecule. Molecule is the smallest particle of an element of an atom. It's a substance that can exist on its own and still retain the property of that substance. It can stay on its own and retain the property of that substance. Ion is an atom or a group of atoms or elements that possess electrical charge. They are charged and in either positively charged or negatively charged. A positively charged ion is called cat ion. Why a negatively charged ion is called anion? Example chlorine, cat ion, Na. So we'll go deep into these stops later. Now, atom has subatomic particles in it. In as much as it is the smallest particle of an element that can take place in a chemical reaction, it has particles in it also, which are called subatomic particles. The subatomic particles are proton, neutron, an electron. If this is an atom, so unless it this revolve around the atom, here is an electron. It revolves around the atom. You notice this is the center. Inside the atom or the middle, you have proton. You have neutron. Now, look at the difference between them. Proton and neutron are inside the atom, the middle, called the nucleus. While electron is outside, it revolves around the atom now proton is positively charged that's the charge of proton is positive why electron is negative then this uh, neutron is neutral it is not charged it is not charged however the mass of this proton and neutron gives us the mass of the atom Proton and neutron makes up the mass of the atom. Why uh, the number of electrons in the atom gives us what we call atomic number. That means atomic mass is the uh, number of proton and neutron in the nucleus of the atom. Why atomic number is the number of electrons in the neutron uh, in the atom. Now the mass, the charge of electron is equal to the charge of proton. However, they are opposite. Why electron is minus 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb, proton P will now be plus 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb.
So that's basically it. So, so with that, I can say, okay, I have introduced physics. This is introduction to physics. In the next video, we'll begin to go into other aspects of physics until we get to the bad guys. And trust me, we'll fight them. All right, thank you. What, uh, what's the next video? Thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel for more amazing videos like this.